So, hello, I'm Dong Kim from KAIST, and today I'm going to talk about the CrossDroid, which enables quick and easy prototyping of Android apps. So, as you see in the left side video, which moves the latte art from one mug to another, so it, uh, CrossDroid allows developers to borrow others under their functions for their own prototype. So, I'll explain what is CrossDroid and how it helps developers prototyping and entire development process. So, uh, let me start with an example. Uh, let's suppose you are a chatting app developer, and one day you come up with an interesting idea of a new feature, which automatically snoozes chat notifications while your users are asleep. So this sounds interesting, but if you think about the, how useful it'll be, you might come up with several questions. For example, uh, how useful it'll be compared to the existing manual snoozing feature, and how annoying the false detection of the sleep status would be. So to answer those questions, you might want to quickly prototype this feature and try it out by yourself for several days so you can decide whether you want to fully develop this feature or not. However, uh, there is a problem. Uh, the problematic part is the sleep detecting part. So sleep detection is typically done by monitoring user status through the smartphone sensors. So it involves machine learning and data collection. So it is not just a simple programming task so if you decide to fully develop this feature by yourself, it will slow down your entire prototyping process. So what you can do, uh, what you can first think of is using existing Android app prototyping tools, because if you search from Google, you can find a bunch of tools there. However, the problem is all of these tools are only for the UI UX prototyping, so you cannot use those for the functional prototyping tasks. So uh, on the other hand, if you think about the sleep tracker apps, uh, they, uh, you can find a bunch of apps from Google. How they track users' sleep status, and they even track how deep users are sleeping. So if you can borrow those functions for your prototype, it will be much helpful. But as you already know, they are only for end users, and you cannot simply use those for your prototyping test. So there still are several ways to utilize existing software resources for your prototyping task. For example, if you can find a sleep tracking library or open source sleep tracking apps, you might be able to use those for your prototyping task. However, the problem is they are rare. Only the small fraction of the entire under the apps turns you into library or open source. And the more problem is if you decide to use open source, you need to analyze the source code and identify the code to migrate and migrate the code to your project. So this is especially difficult uh, when the code base is very large. Uh, and there actually is another way to accomplish the same thing. Uh, MIT App Inventor and similar app, pro app development tools allow the developers to develop an app in modular fashion and share its modules with other apps. Uh, however, uh, to, share or, to share or to use those modules, your app and their apps has to be developed with the MIT App Inventor and those modules has to be explicitly shared with others. So in summary, uh, those methods, since only the small fraction of the Android apps are actually developed with MIT App Inventor, so they are also rare. So in summary, uh, there are software resources you can use for your prototyping task, but they are mostly difficult to find, and sometimes they are difficult to use. So why can't we have something easy to find and easy to use for your prototyping task? So to answer this question, we pre present CrossDroid, which enables quick and easy prototyping by allowing the developers to reuse the functions of any existing Android apps, for, and it also allows them to do that by programming by demonstration. I'll explain what is programming by demonstration very soon. And it also allows them to test their own features, new, new prototypes on commodity Android operating systems and devices. So before we jump into the CrossDroid, let me explain what is programming by demonstration very briefly. So when we program, we usually sit in front of a computer and write code by our, by our hand. But a programming by demonstration is a, it is a concept which enables machines to generate a programmable code by observing how human accomplish the task. So for example, a Sugi Light work, which is presented in Kai 2017, it allows smartphone users to teach their smart, uh, smartphone functions to Sugilight. So for example, if you want to teach how to order coffee to Sugilight, 
You can demonstrate how, to, how you order a coffee through Starbucks app, so Sugilite can record your UI actions to in replayable script for later use. So this is quite an interesting concept, and I'll explain how CrossDroid utilizes this concept for accomplishing its goal uh, by explaining how to use the CrossDroid. So to use the CrossDroid, you first need to download the Sleep Tracker app, and then uh, we provide a development tool where you can de demonstrate how to use the sleep tracking function and uh, it will generate the code for using the function and by using the code you can prototype a uh, new pro you can prototype your new new feature when your prototype is being deployed for testing we provide a cross read runtime app which loads the sleep tracker app and executes it in background for your prototype so this is just an overview and I'll explain each steps in detail so the first step, the downloading step, there's nothing special. All you need to do is just download an app from Google Play or other app markets. So one thing I want to emphasize is you don't need a source code access. All you need is just, is just an APK file. So when you put that APK file to our development tool, it will show you up an, under the emulator where that sleep tracking app is running. So on that emulator, you can click and swipe and navigate to the sleep tracking status screen and while you're navigating, our tool records your actions into programmable Java code. So let me explain more, a little more detail about the code generation. So on the left side of this slide, you'll see a sleep tracking app screen, and right side, I'll show you the code generation. So let's suppose uh, you want to click a start sleep tracking menu at there. So for each screen of an Android app, we provide a callback function to be called. So when you actually click that start sleep tracking menu at there, the cross thread will generate a code for locating that UI component. Uh, in this example, it will search the start sleep tracking string through the screen and locate the UI component of that menu. And then to actually emulate your click operation, it will call the click method on that UI component. So this is a fully programmable Java code, so you can customize it as you want. For example, you can add an error handling code like this. So uh, let's get back to the example again. And after you obtaining the, those code, you can further customize it as you want for, for retrieving the results. For example, you can do such a thing. If uh, this particular string on a screen is sleeping, then return true. If it is awake, then return false. So by doing that, you can obtain a Java method which infers whether users are sleeping or not. So, the next thing you need to do is open the original chatting app from Android Studio or any text editor. And then you can copy the code and paste it. And by using the method, you can finish your prototyping task. So uh, since your prototype is done, uh, I want to talk about how we should execute that prototype. So since, since you borrow the function from through the user interface, and user interface is supposed to be shown on the foreground and to be shown on the user. However, if, you're, if the, every time your borrowed function is executed, if the sleep tracker app goes to the foreground, it will disrupt your user experience it, and it will be very irritating. So it is desired to be executed in background. And actually the easiest way to achieve this thing, executing an app in background, is modifying the operating system, which has full control of the Android user interface. However, if your prototype can only be executed on the specially modified operating system, then it might not be able to be tested on the latest operating systems or operating systems customized by the hardware vendors. So it is desired to be uh, executed uh, without op operating system modification. So uh, to achieve this, we provide a crossroad runtime app which loads and executes the sleep tracker app. It is just an, another Android app which can run on any operating systems and it has a virtual UI space which intercepts all the UI calls of the sleep tracker app and mimics the original Android UI framework. So the sleep tracker app thinks that it is interacting with Android's user interface it actually is interacting with the virtual UI space in background. So by interacting with the virtual UI space, your app can execute the borrowed function in background. 
So your app is the only app actually interacting with the real display. All the other process is done in background. Therefore, by, distribu by distributing the, your new prototype and cross read runtime app together, you can test it wherever you want. You can test it on various operating system versions and Samsung devices and Google devices and smartphones and tablets and wherever you want. Uh, so this concludes the explanation on cross-storage design. Hopefully, I wish you to understand how the cross-storage works. So at this moment, you might have several questions. For example, how usable and useful the cross-storage is and how would Android app developers actually think about the cross-storage? And the, what, is the, what will be the performance of the cross droid and does cross droid really support operating systems and devices, various operating systems and devices? So we can answer all of these questions in our paper, but since today uh, the time is very limited, I'll only talk about the first question. So how usable and useful the cross droid is. So to answer this question, we have recruited five Android app developers. So two of them were professionals, and three of them were CS undergrad students who just had an Android app development experience. So we asked them to implement a new feature on an existing open source Android app, which is called Password Safe App. Password Safe App is a password manager app which stores users' password, website passwords, in an encrypted database file. And you can also find other password manager apps, for example, KeyPassDroid. And the thing is, their password database files are not compatible to each other. So what we ask the developers to do is implement an ability to reading the key pass droid password database file to the password safe app by using the cross droid. What the developers actually need to do is use the key pass droid with cross droid and demonstrate how to use key pass droid's database file and borrow the function to the password safe app. So there actually is another way to accomplish the same task. In case of the key pass droid is open source, uh, they can analyze the source code and borrow the function to the password safe app. However, source code based approach takes so long time, so we only ask the developers to do the, uh, do the task with cross droid. And here is the result. Uh, as you see, one of the, our participants could accomplish the task by writing only 51 lines of code for retrieving results and handling errors and within only 80 minutes. So this is quite an interesting result because it was his first time to use the cross droid. And one thing I also mentioned, I want to mention is one of our beginner level Android app developers who is a CS undergraduate student could also accomplish the task by writing only 51 lines of code within only 150 minutes. So to compare how this task would be difficult uh, without cross droid, uh, we analyzed the source code of the, this uh, key pass droid, and it turned out that more than 10,000 lines of code has to be migrated. And this apparently shows that how usable and useful the cross droid is. So thank you for listening, and this is the end of talk. And Feel free to ask any questions. Thank you. Toby Lee from CMU. Very impressive work. I'm really excited. And I have one question. So why do you limit the use of your system to prototyping? And what are some challenges for using those apps for like real usage? Uh, right. Uh, so your question was why we only restrict our use case to prototyping task, right? So we actually have several challenges and we have several discussion points. The primary thing is legality. If you can borrow others' app and commercialize your apps to then how should your the profit should be shared with the other apps? So it is the major challenge and as long as we understand uh, if you keep it in private and you don't distribute it for commercial use, then you might be able to be fit to the fair use doctrine. Then as long as you fit into the fair use doctrine, you, you'll be safe in legal. So you can see more details in our paper. Hi, just a very impressive work, quick question. Thank so you. if I'm understanding the architecture properly, which I might not be, you're effectively wrapping that app and then you're gonna pull it for data, like that sleep was like, you're reading off the app, right? Is there any way for the app to raise an event? 
So can you actually, can the app actually raise an event like an Android intent and then fire back to the wrapped app, raise an intent to fire back to your app? Uh, but do you, or do you always have to poll continuously? Yeah, uh, by design, it is possible, but our current implementation doesn't support the such a multiple imp implication interactions through the, through the intent or other mechanisms. Um, I've got a question. So, um, let's see. So, when you are um, uh, doing this this extraction of the code specific to an operation, um, can you help me understand the distinction? Or, or maybe it's you're, you're borrowing the same technology uh, from Telescope and, and similar work out of Northwestern. Right. The difference is, so uh, for the there are plenty of related works regarding the in web domain. So but the difference is we utilize under the apps. So webs are openly uh, usually uh, programmed with open the JavaScript but and uh, but however we use the already compiled bytecode. So there are several so much more challenges at executing those bytecode and one of our benefit is since web is all web can be updated to the other logics anytime but in case of the compiled bytecode, they don't change once it is compiled, so it is more stable than those works. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Next up, uh, our final two presentations are actually from